<laughs> Ooh, man, I can't wait to do a video on this gold cube. This is really gonna be fun. Hey, Slim, how's that camera looking? It's looking good. <laughs> you sure it's not on? I think I see the red light on. No, it's not on. You sure? Ooh, it better not be on. Oh, you leave that thing thing on. And make sure that camera lens is clean. What? Because it's always dirty. I noticed that. Uh, Whenever I'm in there looking at that camera, we're clear. it's dirty. Don't worry about it, chump. <laughs> oh, hey everybody, Jeff Williams here and... Liam! Everybody knows that. Yeah, <laughs> I know, sure they do. With AskJeffWilliams.com. Now, a lot of people have been asking where Slim's been hiding at. Where you been hiding at, Slim? I ain't been hiding. You ain't been hiding? I haven't seen you before. The viewers haven't seen you. Where you been? Oh, I've been here and there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so what do you think about this new gold cube? Looks pretty good to me. Okay, so what are we doing today? Well, today... We're going to be talking about, what is that, Slim? That's uh, a gold cube. That's right. You know about the gold cube, don't you, Slim? That's right. <laughs> he slips right around for a while. Okay, now, if you guys aren't familiar with the gold cube, there's a guy out there called Mike Pung. You remember Mike Pung, don't you? Yeah, I remember him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Mike Pung's been around for a while, and he's really good at making this stuff. And I'm going to leave a link down below so you can click on his website and find out more about him. And another thing you may not know is Mike Pung is going to be on the cover issue of Gold Prospector Magazine. Ain't that right, Slim? That's right. You remember Mike Pung, don't you? Yeah, I remember him. <laughs> He's a good guy, huh, Slim? He is. Now, what are we doing, what are we doing today, Slim? Ah, uh, you, you name it. <laughs> He's always talking like that. You run the show. Anyway, so I'm going to show you how to set this thing up. And there's a few tips and tricks that me and Slim are going to give you. And of course, this one comes with the gold banker, or high banker, as Slim likes to call it. And then I'm going to show you what modifications we did, because there's certain things the way we like to run it. And you can do that too, ain't that right, Slim? That's right. All right. So anyway, we're going to get moving along, and we're going to show you how to set all this stuff up. Ain't that right, Slim? That's right. <laughs> so you know what? So Slim, you know what I'm going to say, huh? Yes, I do. <laughs> so come on. Let's go. Oh. All right, so first thing you got to do when you get one of these gold cubes is what, Slim? Uh, figure out how to use it, I suppose. That's right. You got to figure out how to use it. Actually, you got to figure out how to set it up. So how does this work? Well, the top tray is called a slick plate. This thing right here, huh, Slim? Yeah. Okay, so you're going to take that guy off. And you're going to get one of your sortation trays, which is one of these guys. Now, when you buy one, it's going to have three trays, but I like to get four trays just to be safe. Hi, Slim. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the easiest way to put this together is take one of your, your sortation trays, and you're going to flip it upside down. That's right. Hey, that right, Slim. All right. <laughs> All right, Slim. So what's one of the first things I need to make sure that I do right? Don't forget to level the stand. That's right. I got to level that stand. But I'm gonna, you know, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show these people how to put it together first. So I'm gonna flip this thing upside down. So then you're gonna get out your little legs right here, put the little T-bar in there, and then you're gonna put the bottom two on like such. See that? Ain't that cool, Slim? That's cool. <laughs> All right. Now, also, I got I don't know if you can see this, but take a look at this. All right. You want to make sure that these are on the bottom. See that? Just like that. You want these on the bottom. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put these bars in all the way up till they're flush. See that? Okay, and then you're gonna slide the, the front of it right up here against this section right here. See that? And by doing so, it's right up against this plastic. This is where the water would feed out at the very bottom for your tailings. And you want this bar to be right up against here. Okay, then you're gonna take the second one and do the same thing. Then you're going to put it on the inside of the tray, just like that. See that? That way it can't move around. Okay, so, once you get all your legs in, all you're going to do is take it. That's right. Ain't that right, Slim? That's right. You know how to do this. You're going to take it and flip it upside down. Ta-da! How's Ta -da. that, Slim? Isn't that nice? Okay, so here's where your tailings come out right here. You see that? And it sits all nice and level. And then, after that, all you got to do is take your next tray, the next sortation tray, and just put it on top and just start building it up. And then, of course, you put your slick plate on the top. Yeah, easy. Ta-da! 
And that's how you set up a basic gold cube. Now there's a few more things I gotta show you. Ain't that right, Slayer? That's right. <laughs> okay, now the leveling part. Let me show you how to do that. <laughs> okay, now the way that they, they ask you to do this is to use a level. And that way you make sure that the cube is level on the top this way and that the cube is level on the top this way. You see that? Now, there's an easier way to do it if you don't happen to have one of these levels. Mike Punk told me this little secret. He said, Jeff, take the top of the slick tray off, like that. And he said, look down inside of here. Now he told me, when there's water in it, see that water in there? He says, you can use the water as a level. As long as it's straight up against this line right here, you're good to go. If it's not, see my backside right here is a little high as compared to my low side. So I can just adjust the legs. And that's how you know that it's level this way. When you first buy one of these guys, it's going to have oils all over it for when they manufactured it. And if you ever know anything about oil and water, it don't mix. That's right, I slam. <laughs> okay, so what are you going to do? Well, you're going to get yourself a mortar tub like this one. And you're going to put some soap in it like this. <laughs> and then what you're going to do is you're going to go through and you're going to wash that thing really well. I mean really well. Are you hearing me? All right, so you're gonna wash all that out. And then when you do each one of these like that, then it'll be ready to go. Now, I gotta tell you something. When you go to put this thing together and run it in the field, you're gonna make sure that th these mattings are wet. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, Slim? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he knows what I'm saying. Yeah. You're gonna make sure that all this rubber is wet because if you got any air in it, guess what? The bubble's gonna make the water go right over the top. And the water's carrying the gold, and the gold's going over the top too. So make sure when you're in the field, you whip this all down. You can use the pump, or you can have your own little water can or something like that. Now, these things are great because you can process up to a thousand pounds per hour with this thing. And of course, you do a cleanup uh, when, after you run about a thousand pounds in an hour, or when the gold on the top tray is about three inches wide, if you happen to have that much gold. All right, now, the slick plate. I've seen some guys, what they'll do, is they'll take something abrasive like sandpaper or something rough and they'll go across this way. Not this way, but this way. And what they're doing is they're creating grooves in this slick plate so that the fine gold will drop out right away. Well, if you got everything set up right, you really don't need to do that. But I've seen a lot of guys in the field do that. Now, that's one of the reasons why I like this tray over here because if there's any gold in that material, it's gonna just drop out in this drop riffle sluice, but I'll talk about that in a minute. I gotta emphasize this because a lot of people have been doing it and it's been driving me crazy. Anyway, when you're using a gold cube, you do not have to use a surfacant in there to break the surface tension of the water, like jet dry. Let me say that again. You do not have to put a surfacant in there to break the surface tension of that water, like soap. See, a lot of guys do that, and yeah, I, I did that too once until I learned the hard way but you just run it with straight water, it'll be fine. You don't need to put jet dry or detergent or anything in there like that and foaming all this up. So, and also another thing is when you get your cube, it doesn't come with a tub. Now, when Mike Pung designed this thing, he designed it for these small, low profile mortar tubs. Ain't that right, Slim? That's right. <laughs> He's so funny, isn't he? Okay, so I don't like using these low profile tubs. I like using the really big ones, but unfortunately, legs aren't made for that. So I'm gonna show you how I got around that because I just gotta have all the water I can get. When you buy them, get these tube flanges. See that? That's a tube flange. <laughs> okay, why is this important? Because that way you can run multiple tubs. You want as fresh as clean of water as you can get going through that thing. So if you only have one, you're gonna have dirty water real fast. If you have two tubs, the water will last twice as long. It don't take rocket science. This has a dignity all its own. You can connect them with these tube flanges and these pieces of pipe. See that? And I'll show you how to do that real easy. Slim, slim, slim. What am I supposed to do next, Slim? Set up the pump, jump. Set up the pump. Oh, yeah, set up the pump, jump. Ah, you bit me again. Ah. It comes with this 1,100 gallon per hour pump. These are fantastic pumps. When you buy one, you're going to have to wire up your alligator clips. <laughs> these pumps are very picky about polarity. 
So you make sure you get the red one on the brown wire and the black one on the black wire. Hee hee, I'm gonna stick these on your face. In the past, I found out that if I get one of these marine deep cycle batteries, they last a lot longer than just a regular old car battery. So I, I like to buy those. Now, here's something I found out the hard way, is if you go to one of these used uh, computer stores, like laptop stores, you can find these uh, these bins that have all these power supply units in it. See that? Well, what you're doing is you're looking for one that's rated at 12 volts, 3 amps at least. And by doing so, you can run your your pump on electrical power if you happen to have a generator out there and you don't want to tote around a 50 to 75 pound battery. Another popular question I get is how far do I classify down to dump into a gold cube? How far should I classify down, Slim? Oh, about one eighth. Ah, that's right. An eighth of an inch. We like to tell people classify down to an eighth of an inch or smaller. The smaller the better. If you don't know what an eighth of an inch is, just get a number eight screen. <laughs> this classifies through this punch plate down to number eight. What's that, Slim? That's a drop, riffle, sluice. That's drop, riffle, sluice. And I like that because if you got any big chunky gold, it's gonna drop into there first. So check that first. How do we set it up? Well, when you when you get one of these, it comes with a longer tube. See how long that tube is? Woo, that's such a long slam. I'm putting that around your head. <laughs> yeah. And of course, when you buy the standard cube kit, you just get the little short one. It's designed to go into these little tiny tubs, but I like to put them in a big tub. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Hold on. Oh, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. That's a big old marker. Look at him, huh, Slim? Ah, that big one. That's a commander. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Jeff, how do you know what I'm thinking? Your thoughts betray you, young Skywalker. That's how I know what you're thinking. How the heck are you going to put the stand in there? I modified this stand to go into the tub. Now, I'm going to show you how I did that. I like running two tubs at a time put one of these flanges on here so I can run two tubs and I'm gonna show you how to put these in the real smart and easy way so you know what I'm gonna say huh you know what I'm gonna say Slim that's right so come on let's, let's go. go I welded these two little tabs right here see that and the reason why you'll see that in a minute is it keeps the gold cube from sliding around because you're gonna have to extend this out to put these longer bars in I cut six inches off of these guys and I welded it down here on the bottom and the reason why I did that I wanted to make sure that this was high enough to be able to sit inside of this tub like this I trimmed up the feet to go in the tub see that and that way it sits against the walls of the tub and you can see where our little bars that we welded in they fit in nice and snug there see that and then you can see why we put those little tabs right there so it wouldn't slide back and forth you see these you're thinking, Jeff, what are you going to do with those? This piece right here that has a little bit of larger metal welded on the end. See that? Slides right over the top. Then you take your last one. He goes all the way up here. Take these two pieces apart as you're going to slide him in. Then you're going to take this guy. He slides in and under this plastic lip. You see that? And then you're going to angle your spray bars out to about here. Now that you got him all together, I know I'm going real fast, but I got a lot to cover. And it sits on just like that. The blue tube goes in here. See that? Remember, a bucket in is a bucket out. Hi, huh, Slim. All right. <laughs> so that, that's a basic rig right there. I want to add an extra tub. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick, too. The way that you put them in, a Phillips screwdriver, a drill with a quarter inch drill bit. All right, now that you got your your screws out, take your plate apart, there's a little piece of rubber in the middle, threaded plate for the back. You're gonna take the one that's countersunk. Use this as your template, drill your holes, the screws in, own out the center piece. Okay, so you're gonna put your plate right up there, use that as your template. You're going to put the screw in there, barely for that plastic. So. You're going to bolt this plate onto the back. What you're gonna wanna do for this next step is put your tub up against something solid like a wall or something that ain't gonna move. You're gonna put pressure on it. Now I know you're wondering, does it go on the inside or the outside? It goes on the outside, foo! Put your piece of rubber down first and once you get all your four screws in there, see how that holds that piece of rubber in there? You just simply put it in the holes, put your back plate on, and go to town! Yeehaw! And there you go. Once it's tight, you got yourself a nice water seal to put in one of those pipes. 
Just like that. This little piece is supposed to go down just like that. And that way the water flows in and out of them so much easier. See that? And if it's set properly, you don't ever have to worry about the water coming over the top. Right there. See that? And you can see the water flowing through the tray. Oh, is that pretty? Makes me want to go to the bathroom, huh? That's about where I like mine to sit. And then you can see the water coming out down below on your tailing. If you can put it in wet or dry. Now I heard some guys, they like to put it in wet because it goes through faster. And yeah, you're gonna get wet. Let me use my banjo pan. Do 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 with a banjo on my knee. Beautiful looking gold right there. Little pieces right there, see them? If there's any other gold, it's gonna be in the very first tray. So I'm gonna take him out. set him over here to the side and I'm gonna look yeah come here take a look right along here see there's a piece right there I don't know if you can see that piece right there there's a, another piece right there there's a couple pieces right there not too shabby look at that it's the world's biggest gold fan you can either pan it or use a spiral wheel but I elect to pan it oh yeah look at that yeah! <laughs> Holy cow! What the heck? And that, my friends, is how it's done! I hope everybody out there had a good time. I know me and Slim did. And if you did, don't forget to rate, share, and... And you know what? We even got something new called Patreon. So for you super subscribers out there, if you really want to help us out, Cause Slim is being stingy with his gold. So anyway, until next time, this is Jeff Williams and Slim. That's right. <laughs> with us, JeffWilliams.com. Saying if you want that gold, you better cube it or you're going to lose it, fool. <laughs> so come on. Let's, Let's go. go.